You're listening to a Count Out Podcast. So, Curtis, I don't think you heard that intro then because I'm on this fucking bare bones piece of shit setup. But what is up? It is Okada Shorts. It is the Okada Shorts podcast, the king of shorts, the international wrestling grand pricks. I'm your good friend, Curtis Spears. That's your bad friend, Rafe Houston. What up? Yeah, buddy. We're here to talk about a ton, a ton of New Japan fucking news and storylines and goings on and what have you but i gotta say one first thing first thing Mm -hmm. very first thing rafe Mm -hmm. first how about happy one year anniversary to us thinking about this here uh podcast new japan cup uh announcements was when we started the idea of having a new japan podcast last year was it last year or the year before last year it was was last last year wow so it is our anniversary oh that's so sweet oh there there you go happy anniversary buddy we did it there you go. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because the la- the last one was such a fucking shasta fest on paper that I was like, "You got to come on my show so we can talk about this fucking shit." Because I have <laughs> to rage about it. <laughs> and then, uh, and then, <laughs> and then it turned into one of my favorite tournaments that I've ever seen. So, um, and I mean, partially because of the birth of Okada Shorts from it, but also because it was so much fun. So, I am super pumped to talk about the New Japan Cup. So we can. Break it out today. The new New Japan Cup date. It's going to be so much fun. Yeah, this is so much fun talking about the New Japan Cup date. Do you want to launch straight into that since we're on one about it, or do you want to talk about some news? I got something to talk about. Okay. I got something to talk about. Is it how we're not doing the year recap yet again? I want to. Well, we'll do it next episode. Next episode. Recap 2022, next episode. Next episode. But I got something to talk about. I got to ask a question of the Super J cast. Now, you are, <laughs> I can see it in your eyes already. You're a little concerned. <laughs> you here go we go. Here. I'm going to ask him a question. I'm going to ask him a question, all right? Because I got it's, something It's cute to say. that you think they actually listen to us. I think that's what's cute. No, no, here's, here it is. Here it is. Okay. I got something okay. to say. Okay. Now, they may think that we're not going to say anything about it because they are our pod fathers. We yeah. would never have met yeah. if it wasn't for them. This is true. We, we love, love you, dearly. Joel and Damon. We do. We love them. But last time we were on the, uh, we were on this very recording, we said something we were very excited about. Mm-hmm. Okay. We did. Well, I was very excited about it. Mm-hmm. And then I listened a couple of days later to an episode of the Super J cast. It recorded shortly after what we said. So just, just and, to clarify, and, you're talking about the thing that we recorded on the Friday and released on the Saturday with artwork, uh, yep. and then they recorded on the Sunday, and someone on that show said something similar to our idea. <laughs> um, no, not quite. So what, what I'm talking about is yeah. I said that I wanted the Kansas City Chiefs to win the fucking Super Bowl, <laughs> and on that fucking show, <laughs> on that fucking Super J cast, Damon got on there. He said, fuck the Chiefs. He said, fuck Andy Reid. He said, fuck Patrick Mahomes, the nicest guy in the fucking NFL. How are you going to say fuck Patrick Mahomes? Damon, Damon. <laughs> Tell me how my ass chased. How's the fucking <laughs> Kansas City team? He's wearing the hat. Super He's Bowl fucking champion, on one. I'm get a photo of this fucking Super Bowl mighty. champion. I love it. I fucking feel it. Super Bowl champion, Kansas City Chiefs, Damon. How you feeling? Tell me how my ass tastes. Entire city of Philadelphia. I used to live there. I love I loved Philadelphia so much. South Street, Philly, what it do? Fuck y'all. <laughs> I didn't see us going to the Super Bowl trash talk so quickly, but that's uh, oh. that's a relief to me. I prefer that. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I figured that would be fun. Like you thought I was going to talk about the Mo, uh, the Monet thing, but yeah. uh, you know that's fine. We all had the same idea. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's and to be honest, the... that's not exactly like groundbreaking idea either. Like I mean, no, it was no, it was very, actually great. it was pretty groundbreaking by Amy a week earlier than what I told you, but um, but yeah, it, 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 we all are fucking. New Japan geeks. So, like, of course, we're yeah. going to have the same fucking great ideas. Plus, I've been ingesting well, it's, it's like fucking... When, hey? You know, Deep, Deep Impact and Armageddon came out the exact same summer. They're both movies about asteroids hitting the Earth. You exactly. Know, like, shit happens. Plus, I've been passing off Super J fucking takes as my own for fucking years. So, why am I going to stop now? <laughs> <laughs> I was just stoked that I happened to have one before them. So... <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't going to call him out on that. Yeah. No, they're our friends. They are they're our friends. friends, but I do want to... I, I and like, it, uh, it just proves how, like, in fucking... sync we are with them. Except for the Kansas City Chief things. That's obviously... You guys are, are worlds yeah. apart. You're also worlds apart in hockey, too. But, um, but yeah, when it comes to... Well, yeah, my New Japan, we're huge. His team, his team hasn't won the fucking Stanley Cup since 1967, <laughs> so it's fine. <laughs> He's never going to hear this, but I uh, loved meeting Damon. Uh, though oh, you may not want to meet him in real life now because you beat that ass for all your shit talking. <laughs> <laughs> he would throw me through a plate glass window, wouldn't he? Thinking, <laughs> yeah, death, very death match I'm diamond. Up, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, what's up, Kansas City Chiefs? Fucking Colorado Avalanche. What are you going to do about it? And he'd fucking just hit me with a chair. He just does the fucking, oh. he pulls your jersey over your head, a couple to the stomach, and then yeah. barber shops you straight through the fucking nearest window. <laughs> just Hockey shirts me and throws me through a plate glass window. <laughs> yeah, the modern you day heartbreak kid, Damon McDonald. <laughs> oh man, God bless him. I love that guy. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, that must be feel good. I know it feels good to have a Super Bowl win. Yeah, two in the last four years, eh? Yeah, that's so, And we've had three appearances in the last four years. Top. Five straight AFC title games. Fucking Patrick Mahomes, like. 20 something years old he's a better like he's got a fucking 500 billion dollar contract i don't it's literally half a billion for his for his contract uh, I, I don't know how you do that money i am um, christ what's he ever gonna do with his life when i was at my most into nfl it was like fucking ju- like patriots era where they just went through and just every super bowl i would go to fucking it would just be the Patriots fucking winning at the last second and making the other team that had been dominating them for the entire team look stupid. And I was like, I'm done yep. with this heartbreak because I fucking hate this team. <laughs> yeah, and then, uh, oh, that was, oh, because you're a uh, Seahawks fan, yeah. weren't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, so that had to be real bad fucking watching, was it Malcolm Butler fucking pick that one yeah. fucking uh, yeah, that that was one a- pick right at the to let you know how bad it was, uh, got into the venue at fucking, I don't know, 2 or 3 a.m. to watch it. You know what I mean? You get up early, you go out of your way, you're in all this stuff, you're drinking beer that early in the morning, and then you watch this motherfucker just pick that one at the last fucking second when they could have had old mate just run it in. I'm like, just give it to the fucking yeah. beast and let's end this. They try and do something oh, tricky, and, and they gonna... fucking lose it. You don't give it to Lynch? They're like, they, they know they're going to give it to Lynch. Yeah. And there's a reason why they got to give it to him because he'll get it done. Like, and so, yeah. yeah, I was fucking pissed and then I never recovered. And then the other ones were like at Hooters in Tokyo, 7 a.m., one hour sleep, nothing but drinking, watching the Falcons fucking go down. <laughs> it just, uh, over and over, just like fucking devastation, eh? And I was just like, maybe this game ain't for me. <laughs> but. On the bright side, Brady's fucking not in that that piece of shit team anymore, so maybe I'll get back into it. I don't know. Brady retired for the second time this year. He yeah, retired good. last year. Good. He was too then, good. Uh, it just wasn't fair. Again. It was fucking built in a lap. It's it's the guy's he's he's uh you know, Okada level. Yeah. He's Tanahashi. You know what I just realized? Greatness. We really are fucking a lot like the Super J cast starting with fucking sports talk. So let's just jump straight through this. Well, we're not, what, we're not starting with dildo talk, so we're not that much like Super J. <laughs> well, that, that is true. Fucking AI, <laughs> fucking dick talk. Um, so are we going straight to the New Japan Cup, or do we have? Do we want to touch let's, on just recent events real quick? Let's go. Let's go into recent events. Okay. Let's talk about what's happening because we've got so much to talk about. We've got two IWGP Heavyweight Championship matches. We've got Jay White's. Uh, contract being up in the air right now. We've got all sorts of things to really like. Keiji Muto's final match ever? Question mark. 
he said these ones. Even, even on the fucking ring apron where it said last love it had these ones the fucking air quotes yep. over it. like he was, even, he was even fucking working the people on the day like you know so but yeah lo- his lots last lots match of with a beard and then it's his last match with fucking uh you know trunks instead of long boys like he's it's fucking silliness but I think the thing we need to open up, since we're already lit up and ready to go, how about this? Let's go. I've looked it up, and I, I believe I did the count right. Mm-hmm. In the last 12 months of this podcast, mm-hmm. since we started in March, I believe, our, our first unofficial episode was in February. Mm-hmm. The 12 months of this podcast, there have been 10 pay-per-view events 11 if you count Keiji Muto's final match, which wasn't officially an NJPW match. Yeah. Uh, 10 events where you had to pay extra for on your New Japan World subscription mm-hmm. or fight or whatever else you wanted to go for. Yeah. How many of those were rinky dink fucking clown shoes bullshit that people had to get their money back for? And, um, you know, they said it on super J cast, like you might as well just go ahead and order them. Cause you know, you can fucking get your money back anytime because they're going to be fucking clown shoes. Yeah. How, that's how that's you... what eight. Like I think only, only both of the Noah shows crossover. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Oh, both of the Noah shows crossover was okay. Did, and crossover. So seven were and door. door. Oh, Forbidden Door. Did you have to pay for Forbidden Door? You didn't have to pay for Forbidden Door Extra. Or yeah, you, you, would, you would if you don't have an AEW membership. See, I have yeah. I have AEW on fight, so I just got to watch it. Oh, okay. Cool. Oh, actually, no, that's not true. My no, fucking, it's a pay-per-view. Yeah, my life hub of fucking, like, I pay for the AEW subscription. Oh, Jesus, I just realized I did not plug in my computer into the power. We're about to be in for a world of hurt. One moment, hang on. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, oh God. He's doing a whole thing. He's running around right now and he's like pulling his hair out. It's, it's, it's sad because he's got a really nice head of hair. I don't know why he's doing that. Uh, uh-oh. He's got a, uh, he's got an ax. Oh God. Uh, it's not an ax. It's a, uh, get it in, get it in. That's, that's what she said. Plug, plug. I can hear Moochie in the background. Poor little Moochie. She's in a, she's in her, uh, she's in her house house she's been with his head cut off i don't know why i use i don't want to use that phrase anymore chicken with his head what cut off that's a very cool show. Uh, and i'm a vegetarian oh hi mochi no raised mochi up okay. again barking down the fucking house now she's back in here to make my life a living hell Ugh. okay anyway i'm back what are we talking about <laughs> tiny little white haired demon yeah i managed right. to save um, the power though because this was about to turn off and this podcast would be over 12 minutes in <laughs> terrible yeah <laughs> it would be failure on your part bro yeah. i'm used to having All the right, fucking so- tower you tune in to drop your shorts this week uh, on patreon to learn about what i've been going through with my computers so we've been we've been looking at what is it six events that were all on fight like new japan of america events mm-hmm. that people ordered and how many of them did you get your money back on and so like at this point, is it a fucking failed experiment? Like, what do they need to change to, to make these New Japan events, like, worth it? I also have a fucking issue with the fact that, you know, okay, so everyone says, oh, it's extra content, it's extra content. No, it's fucking not. No. We pay for New Japan. We pay for New Japan World. It's a New Japan show. Mm-hmm. Just because it's happening in a different country does not mean it's extra content. Yeah. Like, th- that's bullshit. Mm-hmm. Like, I think it's, bullshit. it's it's We pay for every... New Japan show. We want to watch the shows on New Japan World. I'm see I'm on, on my TV over there. I'm pointing at it behind me, like exactly. the listeners can hear me. But we pay to watch those shows. Why should we have to pay extra to watch them just because they're coming from America? Mm-hmm. Like, if you, it's fucking garbage, man. Well, like, it, it, if I gotta sit here, if I, I I'm, I'm I'm gonna pay to watch Road Two shows, but I'm not. I have to pay extra to watch the ones that aren't just, you know, yeah. And, and it's like, I feel like it's a backwards experiment in itself because like you were trying to build this. I think it is a failed experiment because I think you're trying to build a whole new territory, trying to prove that you can stand next to AEW, next to 
to WWE, next to TNA, next to Ring of Honor, all these things. But instead of making it easily accessible to build this new talent and do all these things, you you invest in the show strong. You create it, you do this small studio show, you're building people, and that's cool, and that was on the network. But then you're going to try and make people pay for an extra an extra show that is the blow off to all the stuff you've been building. So a they're already they're not all the way invested, but now it's like oh if I want to see the end of this, I if I can have to pay for it. And then what's worse is when I pay for it every single time, six of six times or whatever. Actually, yeah, maybe more than that. I'm not even sure. We'll have to do that mass again because I in running around I forgot how many there were, but. Of every time they've done a New Japan of America show, it's been rubbish. Like the technical issues fraught with it. The commentary isn't the same. Like all these kind of things. You're telling me like Kevin Kelly and fucking Chris Charlton can phone into Japan, but they can't phone into America. And that, that's not a slight against Rikabani and, you know, and the Drama King and all these kind of things or whoever that joker is rocky romero's mate they have do strong that can barely speak like love, yeah, yeah it, you know what i mean like just fucking do the real team make it they've see they're already canceling it and changing it because it didn't work because they just didn't do what works like which is give people new japan but have it with american wrestlers and in america like that shows that people can go to so i, I feel like they have have failed at it and i feel like they've blown it and even this battle in the valley they had me semi-interested and it felt like after seeing the Noah shows kind of go off well and seeing the, um, you know, the Stardom show was so good, I was like, well, maybe this one will be fucking done well and, you know, they've spent all this money on Monet and all these things. And then it's just like fucking clown shoes. You're like, oh, well, fuck this. Like, why would I spend money on this? I'm already, why would I spend money on this when I fucking can just watch the regular New Japan Pro. I'll just write this off. This doesn't exist in my fucking canon. Or if I am going to watch it, I'll just watch streams on YouTube or, or whatever and not, like, go out of my way. Why the fuck would I pay $30 for something that isn't going to work every single time? Like, it makes no sense. No, no, you're 100% right. And, and this is not... Okay, for years, for decades, it's been, you know, you have the build-up, and then the blow-off matches on pay-per-view. That's the way it's been since, you know, NWA, WCW, WWE have always done that. But you're building something new. You're yeah. building something You don't very, have the, the audience yet. You don't. And, like, what's with barrier to entry? What's with barrier to entry, man? Yeah. Like, you have a giant, legit, bankable star, banksable star <laughs> in, in <laughs> Mercedes Monet. And people are going to be, they're going to be like, oh man, maybe well, I did. She, she, she that, sold you know? the house. Like they only announced that match and the show sold out. Perfect. Yeah. Now we've got people interested. Now just put it on New Japan World. Focus people's money on subscribing to New Japan World. Make it easy for people to subscribe to that service, like which they have, like their app and stuff is easier to deal with now. But like, even if you just need to relaunch like an American only app or whatever, and then just have people go, Nine ninety nine American, and you can watch everything New Japan, and you can see Sasha Banks as a fucking new match in this Boom. thing. Boom, done. It's not thirty bucks up front. It's only nine dollars ninety nine a month. Produce a good show that works well, that is really great, and then keep them subscribing. Maybe, maybe you yes. even want to go. Okay, so it's nine ninety nine a month, or if you know you really want it, it's sixty nine ninety nine for the year, something like that. Do that instead of producing shit shows at 30 bucks each that nobody will ever buy again, you know? So, like, what? If I'd bought yeah. four of those, I've dropped 120 bucks instead of an annual subscription and every one of them has been shit. Like, it's, it's not okay. It doesn't, it doesn't like, make any sense. They've completely botched it. And this is a company that constantly go live. They constantly produce really high-quality pay-per-views in Japan. So why can't they get their shit together in the US because there are indies on IWTV dropping better production value than New Japan of America. And that that show, like when you watch the replay and the audio is actually there and things like that, is pretty good. But the lighting and stuff isn't good. Monet comes in, the biggest fucking star in the world. You spend a bazillion dollars on it. You can't even see her dances. Who was fucking lighting that stage? Like, it's just darkness in front of the curtain. You know, like... 
This is a fucking joke, man. I, I, I told you over on Drop Your Shorts, the, uh, the show that I was a part of, everybody was scrambling around and it was just in a nightclub. And I can guarantee you it's going to be better lit and the footage is going to look better than fucking New Japan of America. Well, it's not going to look like scramble vision fucking porn, is it? Like, <laughs> exactly. that's, that's the thing. Like, dude, I was sitting there and I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm like, when I was fucking 11, 12, 13, 14 years old and I was a little pervert and would try and watch scramble vision to, you know, late at night so that I could like see catch a, catch a, a glimpse of a boob. <laughs> and like, I'm sitting there and I'm looking at this and I'm like, I'm, uh, the, the, how would you describe that? The, the f- absolute fuck up that was their stream mm. looks like scramble vision porn from like the fucking late nineties. And if you can do anything that's better than that, then it's going to be better than New Japan, the third biggest company in the fucking world. And you're going to say that, like, you can't do better in the biggest country in the world that you're trying to get into? At the very Come least, on, get man. fucking Tony Khan on the blower and fucking be like, yo, can we hire your crew or something? You know what I mean? Or, or who do you know? Yeah. What's all the Ring of Honor gear doing? I'm sure it's in fucking storage. Can we trot it out? Like... I, I, exactly. I, I don't get it. I, and we've got lots to be positive about on this show. And I think that that show did have some good matches. It had some weird matches that I'm Great surprised. Matches. I'm surprised they would put on, you know, again, you've invested all this money in Monet. You, you've got a lot of people, you know, tuning into it. And there's a couple of matches where I'm like, really? You kind of, you'd go that way? Because it felt like they were putting over like a lot of local indie talent and stuff, like more than contracted new japan wrestlers but all that stuff aside it's just not taking advantage of it which is not spending your money well and so it's either you've got to spend money to make money and do it well or you half-ass it and then lose lose money in the long run in my eyes because then people are not going to be interested anyway yeah why wouldn't why wouldn't they have some of the i mean they okay they did have zsj and uh carl I'm sorry, Clark, Clark, who that was fucking awesome. They had Carl. There's no Carl anymore. He's gone. Isn't um, he called like Scotty fucking Eddie, 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 Eddie Thorpe, Eddie Thorpe, Eddie Thorpe. That's, Eddie Thorpe. That's what it is. The NXT names make me laugh so much, man. They're always just they so fucking dorky. Wait till fucking Jay White shows up and he's fucking butter knife Steve McMichael or something. <laughs> um, Good, good he will he will do very well once he gets used to the american style the wwe house style he'll be fine um i, I you just you have these guys you, they did have zs jane clark they had okada and tanahashi at the top of the card they had monet and Kyrie. that that's very very bankable stuff those are two uh ex wwe um wrestlers bankable. which is awesome mm-hmm. they had uh who was it uh cyborg and mandroid um yeah i know who you talk about yeah android well, give me a fucking just call him that and yeah i don't know his name anymore go. either he's got a mustache and a rig i've worked i've worked last night and so i'm, I'm like this isn't our normal uh, time I, I, normally this uh, is not our normal yeah. time it's it's 10 30 in the morning for me i've been up all night and 6 30 okay. p.m so, for me so it's a i'm drinking he's just finished work it's an entire situation oh man it's a whole thing um we're we're not having enough. Okay, so you had Tom Lawler go over. That's good. I'm gonna look at the fucking results. Why haven't I done this yet? We could just open New Japan World results, and it was. But we're like, what happened on this show? <laughs> ah, what happened? Well, you just finished watching the show recently, didn't you? Yeah, like minutes ago. Okay. Also, Fantastic Mania started, which is great. <laughs> I just saw the picture of that. Sorry, Battle in the Valley results. Here we go. Here we go. We're in business. Alex Coglin. Thank there fucking God. Why go. can I not the remember? Android. Alex we knew, everybody I love knew this we motherfucker so much. He is an absolute. So he beats junior. JR Kratos. Mm-hmm. Yes, he did. He beats JR Kratos, who he has wrestled multiple times. A bazillion times. What like why do we have to see that again? Not that it's a bad match. I mean just it's that, impressive but, yeah. every time because he always it's not a bad match. It's just, it's something that we've seen like four times, mm-hmm. you know, like can, can we again, not, taking maybe full advantage they that they, yeah. because they know each other very well. Mm-hmm. Maybe yeah. I, I guess that's the thought. Uh, like, the when you talk about Finley, taking full, good. full advantage, you're using your own guys. They don't cost extra to have them and you know, they'll, it'll be good exposure for them. So I guess that one does make sense, you know? 
And then it was Finley yeah. uh, versus um, your mate Bobby Fish. Bobby Fish, which was super was surprising, but I guess I mean he was on NXT, he was on AEW. He he is a name to and Ring of Honor and stuff. So I mean I mean Bobby Fish makes sense as an investment, I guess, but he's just not really. I used to fucking active. love Red Dragon. Yeah. Then we've got uh, we've got a lot of great people on here. So Volador Jr., who like does come over a lot from CL, CML, CMLL, Kushida, Kevin Knight, and DKC. Good for DKC for graduating. Did you see DKC is no longer? Yeah, young I did. He is I now did, yeah. uh, officially graduated. Good for him. Way Amy calls him the dick because uh, she she, <laughs> she read it wrong one time. She, she was reading over my shoulder. He's like, "Who's the dick?" And I'm like, "It's the DKC." She's like, "Oh." <laughs> So, so now he's the dick. Then we had, uh, uh, Rocky, Josh Alexander, Adrian Quest, and Masker Dorada. Um, most of those guys I like. I'm not a big fan of Adrian Quest, but like everyone else in this match, I think is fucking fantastic. Josh so Alexander, fuck, I'd love to see more of him in New Japan. And I believe Dude, in that so multiverse good, eh? crossover, he's fighting Kushida, right? Yes. What a yes. match. It's, it's fun that they always. Yeah, what a fucking match, That's dude. Sick. Oh my God. I wish he had I a single they lean into... on this card, though. That would be sick. I, I hope that they lean into the Josh Alexander uh, technical wrestling versus Kushida's technical ability. Yeah. Like really start to change that for Kushida and like turn him into something, uh, something different. Yeah. So, <laughs> then what? we had uh, Fred Rosser lose to Kenta. That's Kenta a good match. To go well, to I, I enjoyed that. New strong open weight champion. Yeah, dude. Fred Rosser's like, I, I'm really impressed with uh, Fred Rosser. Eight defenses of the strong title, and most of them were against people that nobody gives a shit about. Yeah, he but worked like, really hard, man. Like it, he, he worked so hard, really hard to rehabilitate himself. You know, from the you know WWE sort of brand he had, and to kind of you know sculpt himself into like a bit of a hard man. And uh, don't get me wrong, I haven't watched every episode of Strong, but the things I've seen and the things I've seen him do. Uh, the matches and the promos and stuff like that. He's, he's come really far. I, I think he he can have a place on the New Japan roster, man. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I could see him, like, maybe... He, 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 he came out like, like a star, too. The, like, that music and the belt and, like, everything. Like, I felt like he, he really did well. And I I like that they sort of protected him a bit. Like, some people would maybe, maybe think that, like, you don't, you know, you don't need Kenta to not have, like, a super clean win over someone like Rossa, but I I like that they did that because it showed kind of like that this they value him and they're still planning to do things with him. Though I was super surprised to see Juice because I thought he was fucking done with New Japan, but maybe he's just the ultimate worker of all time, and maybe he's just doing both. I mean, he hasn't really done much for AEW since he has apparently gone all elite. I don't I don't know what's going on with him. I'd have no problem with Juice just being yeah. in New Japan. Yeah, I mean, like, Juice, come on. I, I, I get it. Like, you, you're you not exactly sure where you want to go right now, maybe? Yeah. Come home, buddy. Yeah. We'll, we'll love you. We love you in New Japan. He loves to, to fucking lie to people and fuck with them, though. So, like, the whole thing could just be, be a work, you know? Like, oh, yeah, I'm fucking over here. But in reality, it's like, you know, he's just still with New Japan. So. If Yeah, if he was just, like, just on the New Japan, like, of, of America shows, like, if that was just what he was doing, like, he didn't come back to Japan except for maybe for, like, a G1 or that something like fine. that, that'd be fine. That'd be, that'd be totally fine. And be maybe, fine. like, he has, I mean, he's a dojo guy. Like, maybe he's got that good a relationship that he was like, yo, my wife is here, I can't be coming to Japan all the time, I need to, like, be working here. Maybe they're like, yo, get that AEW money, we'll still give you dates, maybe we carve out these kind of dates per year or whatever, and we're still working together. And he's like, sweet, too sweet, in fact. Yeah, yeah so good for him. Mm-hmm. That's where he needs to be. Yeah. That's where he needs to be. So Kent is the new uh, strong open weight champion. He's got the he's got one of the first words on a belt belt. Yeah. Good and for him. you know what? He's been, uh, he's been like sort of the person that that belt has kind of been circled for or meant for since that started. And though strong in its current incarnation has sort of come to an end, it's sort of appropriate that he would be you know, the American champion, I guess, you know. Instead of the U.S. champion. Yeah, that's not, <laughs> that's that's not the American champion. Oh, my God. Yeah, I know, oh, it's my confusing. God. Can we talk about the belts for a second? Anyway, uh, <laughs> so we've got the strong open weight tag team championships, Alex Shelley and Chris Saban, the Motor City Machine Guns versus Jarrell Nelson, Royce Isaacs, West Coast Wrecking Crew, who I fucking love. I love, I love West Coast Wrecking that. Crew. I should have won that fucking match. Ash, Ash from... Um, 
how to talk to your friends about wrestling. She she calls them the West Coast Wrecking Daddies or something like that. <laughs> okay. Like uh, she's she's a big fan. But, Isaac's um, facial hair yeah. is is perfect. Oh my god, it's it's fantastic. It's it, lovable, lovable. If anything, um, but yeah, I, I love those guys, and I really wish that they had uh, taken those belts. I think that those belts were meant for them. I I know why they put them on Aussie Open first. To really like say like first champions Aussie Open these guys are are the future. Then they had to pull them off because they wanted to send Aussie Open to Japan. Okay, they put them on the Motor City Machine Guns. That's great. That add whole to the legacy of the strong. Belt. Sure. Yeah, that whole strong uh, experiment was for Team Filthy. Like Strong was the Team Filthy show for a long time. Why don't you put those belts on Nelson and Isaacs? Please, come on. I okay. do not know. Next but, up. but also shout out to again Joel from the Super J cast because he him and his strong alongs, I guess, which have now come to an end, unfortunately. Like he's been talking about the West Coast wrecking crew and Team Filthy since it started. You know what I mean? He's been singing yeah. their praises longer than anybody else. And he had his finger on the pulse. And I think we are gonna see great things from that team. I really hope you're right. I've I've been I've been uh for like two years now, like get them in the fucking tag league. Let's fucking go. But, um, okay. So next up we've got Eddie Kingston and Jay white. This could lead us into the Jay white, uh, area. Jay white defeated with a Northern lights bomb and must leave new Japan. I fucking loved this match. That was good. Did you, it? did you enjoy yeah, the Jay yeah, white match? I did enjoy it. Yeah. I, I love that it started out as like your, you know, your average Jay White match and things like that. And by the end of it, it's it's a strong, you know, uh, King's Road, Eddie Kingston show, you know, where they're throwing bombs at each other and things like that. And like the storytelling from Eddie Kingston is chef's kiss yeah. off the fucking chain. That that scene where he like Jay's on his knees and he's got his he's got his hand or his hand around Jay's chin and he's like, I'm going to fucking end you, boy. Yeah. Oh, that was good. God damn it, that was good. Mm-hmm. Now, nah, Jay, Jay's last two matches, his Hikulea match was really good as well. Like, he went out on his sword, and, I mean, there's obviously rumours abound. Nobody really knows anything for sure. Um, but if this is the last we see of Jay White for a very long time, I think he he went out doing whatever the company wanted and doing it to, like, the absolute best of his ability, you know? like And, and I think they were two great Absolutely. matches where he made the – the people he was facing look like absolute superstars. Uh, so then we got Tom Lawler and Homicide in a no DQs, no ring, a no ropu, uh, you know, style match. Uh, Tom Lawler beats Homicide. I mean, Homicide. I haven't. I, I like Homicide. He was great in, in early days of TNA. He was great in Ring of Honor. But like, really, Homicide? Where's Where's he been for the last like? 10 years. Yeah, I haven't years. I haven't been as I mean he has been around. I've definitely watched him on IWTV <clears> and he's been on ICW No Holds Barred. He's been all over the place really, but like uh I, uh, this angle I mean the the packages that they were playing did went a long way to kind of filling in some gaps for stuff I hadn't seen and it made it look like I guess they had like you know a, a bit of a rivalry leading into it and it was like a filthy Tom vehicle, but it, it was like kind of surprising that they didn't take that opportunity to have like the blo- a blow off with like one of their guys, guys, you know, one of the strong guys. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then we had Zack Sabre Jr. versus Clark. Ooh, a couple of these, a little couple of these, a couple of these. and a uh, couple of these. And then we, so that was for the world television championship match. Uh, 14 minutes and six seconds, the arm breaker Zack Sabre Jr. retains. Now, this match was fucking awesome. <laughs> I but, um, um, fell asleep. Uh, not because it was bad. What? I was having a good time, but I was at the... I have had, I don't know, four hours of sleep a night for like this entire week. And I was on the couch with the doggy, and I'd just seen a big plate of nachos, and then I promptly fell asleep. And then, <laughs> no, that's fair. so, that's but I was fair. enjoying it when I, I saw the side of it, and I love both guys. So tell me about it. Um, well, I mean, there, so it starts out with like, I don't know, a lot of feeling out, a lot of feeling out, and that's then probably, like probably what the last, me to fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last like six minutes is like a, a sprint, which was really nice. But I think what they could do. 
when they when they give you this 15 minute time limit like it kind of is starting to look like these matches are going to go 15 minutes you know like that's just saying like this is a 15 minute match they they really need like zach his he's able to do flash pin flash submission stuff they really should do something with that to keep people on their on their heels a little bit you it know would be keep funny if on like their, like you said it's a 6 minute sprint if it just began that sprint and only went six minutes. You know, it just out yeah. the gate immediately. Carl's going for him and bringing him to it, and then Zach is the better wrestler. Like it, you know, it doesn't need to to be like a closing stretch a thon. You know, no, absolutely. Um, but yeah, Zach is Zach is fantastic. We love Clark. We like seeing Clark in big spots on the card. So that was cool. Uh, I mean, they had the the third third match from the top. So, yeah, you know, deal. after that was just the main events. Mm-hmm. So good for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and next up for, uh, next up for Zach is Kevin Knight. Kevin Knight's coming, uh, came out to challenge him next. So did he? okay. I missed you, that obviously. Yes, he did. Asleep. That's fun. Do you think that Zach is going to run through the LA dojo yes. until he makes it to Shibata? Mm, that. I hadn't thought of that, and yes, now that you say it, because, I mean, Shibata began his sort of return to wrestling with that exhibition match against Zack. Yep. So it only makes sense it would go back around. Absolutely. That, that would be really cool if we got idea. there, if they'll let him. And you know what? Even though they don't let Shibata wrestle in Japan, they do let him wrestle in America. He has wrestled yep. in America for AEW, so maybe they start to do something with him on Strong. That would be great. Yeah. The New Japan of America being the Shibata show would be fucking great. Yeah, absolutely. Also, you talking about challenges and things like that, we quickly skipped past David Finlay's attack of Jay White as well, which was fucking cool. We did. We did. And I know that a lot of people couldn't even hear it because of the fight fucking feed was messed up. That's a joke. So, fin, you know, Jay's there. He's about to uh, he's about to, to say his goodbyes to New Japan and he's attacked by David Finley, who just says, fuck your era. And uh, that's that. What was it? it was what was it that Finley said? If, uh, if I see you in this ring, you better have my permission to be there. Yeah. He said so Greatness. many cool things. He talked about being an outsider. He talked about how in America, he's Irish. In Ireland, he's American. And in Japan, he's a gaijin. Like, he's like... Um, he's like, I'm always an outsider and I'm fucking sick of it. He's like, I don't need anybody. Uh, and he basically said this, this isn't a, a competition or whatever. It's a business and a savage like me is built for it. Like it's basically what he was saying. So I think we're going to see, and you know, he just took that huge fucking run in the G1. It made me rethink my entire picks for this new Japan cup coming up because I think he's going to be fucking Mm -hmm. coming in hot. For this new Japan God, I Cup. hope so. Yeah. How do you think this re- uh, this will play on Bullet Club? Do you think that he's like putting in a bid to become Bullet Club's leader, or do you think that he's going to no. do his own thing? I think he's going to do his own I thing. I hope not. I hope he continues like the rebel thing, where he's just this like ass kicker on his own. Like, yeah, I I think that would I be cool. It. Yeah, I think that would be really cool. I love the idea of Debbie Chan being fucking hardcore badass yeah i love that shit. and if he has to team up with anybody you put in with fucking suzuki and the boys that'd be sick Ooh, ooh. okay okay yeah okay <laughs> he likes that i like that <clears throat> okay so now the the main events mercedes monet 26 minutes 47 seconds beats Kyrie to become the new iwgp women's champion with the Monet maker, they actually nailed it this time. Sick, Fucking, it? it looked great. I um, it's a great match. I loved man. it. Yeah, it was, it was a really so good. good. <laughs> also, it's the first time that like I've paid attention to the belt slash seen it properly, and that's a that is a good looking belt as well. Like the kind of castle yeah, it's type got thing. a very um, IWGP version two yeah feel to it. It's I gorgeous. like it. I it like really it a is. lot. And yeah, and I really enjoyed the match. They pulled out all the stops. It fit, it felt like they booked it to be the main event, you know. Even though it didn't go on last, and they were co-main events, like with all the extra stuff they put in there and stuff, they really booked it to shine and and steal the show in some ways, you know. 
Um, but yeah, I loved it. Monet coming out in the Monet coming out in the Hanukkah gear. Yeah, that was, was really cool. That was really cool. Beautiful moment. Mm-hmm. I loved it. Um, yeah, I I mean, thirty bucks might be a bit much for this for this event, but man, what a fucking match! Yeah. What a fucking match! And then directly afterwards, Kazuchika Okada versus Hiroshi Tanahashi in America for the IWGP World Heavyweight Title. Mm-hmm. Wow. Like, yeah, back to back to back fucking bangers, yeah. just absolute badass matches. Boom, 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 right in a row. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think that this was as good as some of their other matches, but I mean, if I was in the fucking crowd, I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have been sad. And yeah. I'm not upset that I watched it because it was fucking great. It was two of the best of all time. So and see, I, I, I think I, with this this show, you know, it was hot and cold. If they hadn't had the technical issues, I would maybe make a case that it's worth the money. Do I still think I should pay extra beyond a subscription that I've had for fucking, you know, years and years and years? years like, yeah. yeah, exactly. No. Um, but I could understand it. But, but you need to deliver the production. You know that, and that. Yeah, that's absolutely. It. Yeah, absolutely. And until that goodwill is built up, I would won't even consider it you know, going yeah. forward. So we're looking at this, looking at this, and saying, you know, does that seem like it was worth the money? Um, I think the only match that didn't really do it for me was the Homicide and Lawler match. I love, I love Tom Lawler, but really, like, just didn't do it for me. And that, like, okay. There were some great surprises. David Finley coming out to, you know, ruin Jay's moment. Um, Jay White leaving New Japan. We, we No one knows what he's going to do. Like, this is, we can't talk about one of these things without it leading directly into the other because there's so much going on. Which is like Japan a World right Book now. show. And if it wasn't overshadowed by, like, the technical issues, I think people would have a very different sort of uh, opinion of it, you know? What was your thoughts? Absolutely. Uh, I mean... What was your, your thoughts of um, Mercedes coming out at the end and her and Okada sort of being like, we on the same page here kind of thing? I, th- I think that was really cool, showing both titles equal together. They're both money-themed uh, <laughs> yep. money themed wrestlers. And you're like, this Smart. could be an opportunity, maybe some mixed tags, maybe... You know, there's historic there's a, X over. Yeah, maybe there's an alliance. You know, like so they're in each other's corner. Like there's cool things that could be done putting them together. I love that idea. I love that idea, and I'll tell you why. Because you've got a bankable star in America and a bankable star in Japan, mm-hmm. and they're both leading the way for this one company. Yeah, exactly. Both belts. Smart. They look good together. Like it looked like a team that you could see, uh, and it was funny. <laughs> it was so funny as well that when they're interacting. Um, you know, and Okada's being Okada and she comes in, she's like, you know, and says her promo and he's like, yeah, and they hold up the belts and stuff. And then the moment that's all done, you see the real Okada appear when he thanks her and shakes her hand. He's got this like dorky smile on his face. He's like, thanks so much. Like he's being such a sweetie. <laughs> but like all up until that a point, uh, point, he's all business, you know, I'm a bit of a prick now, fucking leader of New Japan Okada. And then you see like, the dork that you see on Instagram eating ice cream all the time and fishing, you know, like <laughs> going fishing because he is a big nerd, you know, and so it was really cool him being like, "Thank you so much." Like, <laughs> so, yeah. couldn't, couldn't like wait to break character. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just absolutely couldn't wait. Yeah, he couldn't wait. It was, like, it was awesome. Um, um, so as as we wrap up our, our thoughts on that, um, we won't go into heaps of depths. Uh, depth on the KG Muto show. I haven't seen all of it. I've only seen one match. I've only seen Okada versus Kaido Kiyomiya, and I was so fucking pumped to see it, even though I knew the ending, the clips were everywhere. This entire match was wicked, man. And it was a perfect example okay. of why... People would maybe say, why would you book your champion to lose to the New Japan champion on your own show? You know, why would you guys agree to this? It disavows him. It makes him look weak. The answer is that they have complete faith in Kiyomiya because they knew he would get himself over no matter what and in defeat. And from the very second he fucking walked out on that huge stage looking like a huge star, the apprehension in his eyes as he's looking at Okada and he's kind of giving himself little punches in the face, like psyching himself like, I, 
he, he's even looking around like starstruck when he comes onto the platform and it's like, this is big. This is the biggest moment in my career. Can I hang with this guy that I call hero? Um, and it's then, a beautiful moment because like Kiyomiya, like he was a perfect foil for Okada. Okada is cocky, arrogant, you know, that sort of thing. Kiyomiya, you know, he may have a similar look to a young Okada, but he's not a young Okada. He doesn't have that arrogance. He doesn't have that cockiness. He tried it. He kicked He kicked Okada in the face. And he caught fucking hell for it. Yeah, exactly. You know? And and he he had like a real fire and honesty about him that was like really hard to miss, you know? And it as it played out, it's not like Okada just steamrolled him either. They gave each other a lot. And it looked like a really hard won contest. And by the time it's all said and done, Kia Kimia will get him. Like eventually, you know what I mean? But but in this time, in this moment, that's like the way it had to go. He's the biggest star. You're going to make your name off him. And he looks like a bright-eyed, young, wannabe Okada. He's his hero. And it wouldn't yeah. surprise me that by the time they meet again and when Kiyomiya eventually beats him, you know, in life, he won't be looking like that anymore. You know, he probably the hair will be gone. You know what I mean? He'll probably de- dress different and he'll be his own man. You know, but because to start, he's, you know, he just wants to be Okada. And then we're going to see where he becomes. And I love this style of wrestling. Am I going to surprise, uh, subscribe to Noah World? No. I, do. I'm, I'm fucking, I don't have any more time for another wrestling company. <laughs> I don't have the time or the money. But I am going to watch anything I can with him in it because he may be now one of my favorite wrestlers going like I really really enjoyed everything he had to offer and he's definitely somebody to watch I would kill to have him in New Japan oh absolutely so you think you think that this show did its job the the job was to establish that Okada is top of the mountain yeah he's king shit Mm -hmm. and to make Kiyomiya look like a baby face that um is on a on a road to a new level absolutely and people would go well doesn't it make you know, Noah look like it's not as good as New Japan. Yeah, but it's not, and everybody knows it. Like you're not, yeah. you're not pretending. Like New Japan is like the third biggest company in the world. Everybody knows who these people are. Name, value, Wrestle Kingdom, all these things. You know, but what you're doing is you've established a deal where you you're giving New Japan a really cool, fun angle, like the champion versus champion big dealness, and like the the face kicks and the shoot fighting and the running in on each other and the promos and stuff is how you build a fucking main event. And it wasn't even the main event of that show, but, you know, there was just so much hype into it. I couldn't wait to see it, you know? Like, and and I think that's just, like, how you do it, you know? Like, it was really textbook wrestling and everybody wins, you know what I mean? Even in defeat, KMA is a bigger star with more sympathy, you know, with... And everybody will be lining up when they get to have their rematch. You know, you think we'll get uh, Kiyomiya in the G one? That would be fucking awesome. That would be so cool yeah, if he was in the G one. Got his win back in the G one. It's like a nice, safe place to get the win back to start with. Um, then we get a second dome show in, uh, like, or a, a big Dominion, yeah, may, challenge may, or something. Uh, may, imagine if like Kiyomiya is like the one that knocks Okada out of the contest. Like he's the blemish on his resume or whatever and then then it's like that you know like there's a they have a a challenge but he's not he's not in the dome but he's like you know king of pro wrestling or like fucking yeah like you say dominion or something like that that'd be really cool that'd be fucking awesome that'd be awesome um so yeah like i don't want to go too far down the fantasy booking rabbit hole but yeah there's more to come Mm -hmm. more to come between noah and new japan and that's fucking awesome absolutely it is um so are we finally at the New Japan Cup? As I say, we've we've touched on Jay. Mm-hmm. We've touched on Okada. Oh, we didn't talk about Okada versus Shingo, which was oh, fucking it. That was that, that was, was my great. favorite match of this in t- the last two weeks. Yeah, yeah, Okada versus Shingo was fucking great. Yeah, oh, exactly. God. That's but, Okada. I mean, you know, what a be. run, right? Like Okada uh, g- goes through Shingo, goes through Tanahashi. And goes through uh, Kiyomiya, which is wicked. And also, we we kind of breezed over the match, but Okada and Tanahashi were fucking awesome. They were they were yeah, it was good. It was so killer. It Big was really match. Good. Tanahashi so fucking comes out. How random that like 
he lost a tooth in that match against Okada. Three teeth. And then lost teeth just leading up to the match. That's dedication oh to the cause by Tanahashi. He's taken he's taken the uh, the Briscoe tributes a little bit too seriously. <laughs> <laughs> the the third Briscoe brother. He um yeah. the only disappointing thing about him having a title match is it's not going to be in my New Japan Cup, which I'm I like to go on a tirade of predictions where I convince you that he's going to win things, and I can't do that this year, which I'm very upset about. Ah, sad times. Uh, he needs to rest up anyway. He had a he had a great week. I mean, like the match with Kenta was really good. So, I mean, we look at we look at what's gone on with Okada. Like, is there anybody who can go through the like the former ace of Dragon Gate, the former ace of New Japan, and then the current ace? <laughs> of noah in the same fucking week yeah it's crazy That's wild it's absolutely crazy just just in the same week <laughs> and just deliver bangers as well like just deliver absolute bangers it's, it's almost like people i know people know but it's almost like we suffer from mediocre excellence from okada you know what i mean everyone just yeah. expects fucking five, six-star bangers out of him and make no big deal about him anymore because that's just the level he's always at. But I think he deserves his flowers all the time because he, he's the fucking best. He deserves to hold that belt. He deserves to be the champion. He's going to be on a run probably leading all the way into Wrestle Kingdom again. And it, it New Japan feels right when he's the champion because you just know that main yep. event is going to be fucking special every time. Top of the card is secure, no problem. Yeah, yeah like I saw I saw that uh, him and Shingo got like 4.75 from Stinky Uncle Dave, and I was like, bitch. dude, Are you get sorry? the fuck out of yeah, here. Get the fuck that, out you of just call me a bitch? <laughs> you just call me a bitch, motherfucker? Fuck it. I Four, seven, five? slap get you out. in your fucking face. Shingo Takagi. You're talking about, if Okada wasn't in that company, like then Shingo would be, well, I mean, look what happened in the fucking pandemic. Shingo was the champion. But you know what I mean? Like, Shingo is, like, easily one of the best wrestlers in the world. Like, when I think about current best wrestlers, if I just think about top five off the top of my head, I'm thinking Okada, Shingo, Will, Omega, and I don't know, probably Danielson. Like, they're just, you know, my personal preference. Um But, yeah. like, you know, uh, if I'm just talking New Japan wrestlers, I'd drop Danielson out and I guess I'd probably put in Naito I guess probably probably Naito but see Naito can be hit and miss for me depending on the match anyway it doesn't matter that's not the point the point is that Shingo that's is just the, the greatest fucking he's just like the MVP draft of all time eh? he can do no wrong he can have bangers with everybody he's just so good yeah it's it's oh god it's great Okay, and so we'll move on to the New Japan Cup. New Japan Cup. Before date. we do, let's pause it real quick before we begin oh. the New Japan Cup. I've just got a dog staring at me, and it needs some food. So let's take a quick two-minute okay. break, and then we will return with the New Japan Cup date. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Okada Shorts New Japan Cup date for 2023. Here we go. The official title announcements. The brackets have been revealed. We got some stuff to talk about, and we're going to break it down for you in the best case scenario, worst case scenario, as we are wont to do. Absolutely. Uh, One year in fucking <laughs> in history has been uh has been i can't even fucking speak but you know what i'm trying to say <laughs> i wasn't sounding very professional or newsworthy that these people are like this motherfucker did commentary but uh yes it's a, it's our one year anniversary the anniversary of the original new japan cup date best, best case worst case blurst case West case. Worst, worst case, West case. <laughs> That's what we're doing. And we're starting uh, all, let's just start all the way up on the top left of the bracket and let's break it on down, my man. All right. So our first top left bracket, we're going to have a, our first little quadrant, Sonata and Tai Chi, and the winner will face Kenta. So Let's go worst case scenario first. We've learned over time that the worst case scenario always bums us out and we always end up doing that last. Mm -hmm. So let's not yes. do the worst case scenario. Last. Sure, sure. So Sonata or Tai Chi? Um, so worst case, as you well know, I talked about it last week. The worst case would be 
Sonata for me. Uh, a, I love Tai Chi. I'm interested to see where Sonata goes, but not interested enough to see him in the main event of Sakura Genesis when I'm in Japan. So I need him eliminated in the very first round. And that might go because Sonata's had a really shit run of things in the last, like... Yeah, he's been on know, a losing streak. That's months. the story they're telling, I think, so... So maybe him going out in the first round of the New Japan Cup will continue with that. So we'll say and best case... To his, like, you know, him and Tai Chi have always vibed even when they were on opposite factions, you know? So maybe there's something there. Maybe there's, like, a meaningful nod. Maybe there's a handshake, like, you beat me, but I like you. Maybe they That's kiss. Fine, guys. Yeah. Maybe Just they fine. kiss. Yeah. Maybe Ready they to kiss. kiss. Yeah, exactly. He Tai Chi's always coming out... He starts coming out dressed as Miho Abe to like walk Tai Chi to the ring. <laughs> Miho would have never looked better. That's true. Yeah. Miho would never have had more facial hair. Yeah. <laughs> so so we're gonna say worst case scenario would be Sonata, best case scenario, Tai Chi mm -hmm. to move on to face Kenta. Yep. And okay. I would also say that this is there's a few of these here where we I felt like the buy isn't warranted. This one is warranted. Kenta is the strong champion. It makes sense that he would wait until the next round for one of the challenges. So that completely makes sense. Well, we'll speak about the buy being warranted for the next one. Yeah, we will. Tetsuya Naito and El Phantasmo. Best case oh, scenario, we, we worst did, case scenario. This one's pretty tough. Did we vibe on the Tai Chi best case scenario? I think people know us well enough by now that they know how we feel about Tai Chi. Uh, I want to see him go really deep in this tournament. I would absolutely love that. I think he's shown some amazing, like, babyface energy and, like, especially with his match against Will, which was fucking awesome. I would love to see him great. go deeper in this. I would love to see him start to reach more into that bag of, like, Kawada, King's Road tricks and uh, and keep that train going. Opulence. Let's go. Opulence. Uh, okay. So next up. Best case scenario, worst case scenario. This one's tough for me, man. Tetsuya Naito versus El Phantasmo. Winner to face Chase Owens? <laughs> okay. So, uh, uh, <laughs> I went on a fucking... How many tirades can I go on unwarranted buys and them just taking two extra seconds? Like, I know why they're not doing it. They're like, we need somebody else in the round and we want to have Naito versus El Phantasmo. And maybe that is a foreshadowing of like leader of LIJ versus future leader of Bullet Club. So I understand that. But you could then do that in the next round because Chase Owens is basically a buy himself. Like you may as well not even have him in the fucking thing. My only thought Ouch. is, is he still carrying around that stupid Texas title or whatever he had? Maybe he counts as a champion that way. I don't know if he's still got it. Who cares? It doesn't really count. But um, I think best case scenario for me is El Phantasmo. Uh, oh, we're doing best case, worst case. So worst case for me would be Naito. Not that Naito is bad. I would be quite happy with a, a, another Naito. It sounds crazy to say another Naito Okada main event in my Sakura Genesis, but it'll be epic and awesome, you know? But El Phantasmo yeah. knocking him out nice and early and continuing like on a road to potentially being the leader of Bullet Club, especially when we maybe talk it without getting too far ahead, if we talk about a situation where maybe you end up with El Phantasmo running through Chase Owens and then, you know, running through Kenta, proving that he's the strongest, you know, in Bullet Club of potential, you know, leaders start to run through the other members. I think that El Phantasmo and Chase would have a really great, like, fun shot. Oh, I think, I think it'd be good. Like, I think it'd be good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it, I'm still running pretty... It, it's easy to fall into patterns where you rip on Chase. You know what I mean? But he has had some pretty good output in these tournaments and some pretty fun yeah. matches. So I think it'll be good. And it also will kind of begin... that uh, Like, if they are putting ELP on that road, it sort of begins that, like... Chase Owens is, like, maybe... You know, he's one of the longer-running guys. You know, Farle is away, he's doing the Rogue Army in Australia and stuff. Like, Chase Owens is one of the longest tenured Bullet Club members at the moment. So he might feel like he he has a reason to feel like he should be in charge of Bullet Club, but it ain't going to happen like that. No. That's, uh, that's a, a great point. Like, Chase, love him or hate him, dude can go. Like, he can put on some really entertaining matches. Uh, he's been doing a lot to, like, try and uh, shore up his body, make sure that he looks great coming back to Japan. I haven't seen him in a time. while. I saw those uh, announcements where he was, like, putting in training, doing stuff, blah, 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 like, trying harder. But then I haven't really seen – I don't super follow him on social media, so I haven't seen how he's going with that. Have you seen any pictures of him, or has he kept it pretty dark? Um, 
I don't follow him on uh, social media much either. I just know that that's like the last time I, I saw an update from him. Like the last the time anything thing, popped right? up, it was him saying. I mean, yeah, neither of us saying, are like, divorced I'm, I'm dads, in the work. So, so there's no real reason for us to be on his feed. But like, I would think that, <laughs> I, would th- I would think that, uh, mate, you know, without me searching his profile right now, I would like to think that maybe he did those announcements. Maybe he's been in the gym. Maybe he's kept it dark. And maybe we're looking at a different Chase Owens come this tournament. Seems crazy. It'd but be great maybe. if he came out and he put in the work, man. If he puts in the work, good for him. Looking you like know, fucking. That's great. Was it Katsuya Kitamiya? You know, that fucking monster. I used to have R.I.P. Kitty. We used to call him Kitty. R.I.P. He just comes out completely roided to the gills. I'd be like, let's go. Oh, <laughs> let's fucking go, Chase. On the gas. Let's go. Okay. Oh, man. So, <clears throat> next up, we've got Ren Ren versus Evil. Mm-hmm. What do you think best case scenario, worst case scenario? Worst case scenario has to be Evil going on a run, right? Yeah. Exactly, that would be, and you know what? It's New Japan Cup. There's every chance in the world it could happen. Um, that would be worst case scenario, um, but yeah, best case would be Narita. Um, I I kind of whenever I look at these things, I always kind of start to look to the next match, and I sort of feel like Ren will get through to face Cobb, and then you know maybe Cobb is the potential because you always go look at the guys that have got the belts, right? So it's like maybe yeah. Narita takes the tour of the islands and then maybe Cobb and his boys United Empire are coming for a shot at the trio's belts with Suzuki Ooh. and Desperado, which is sexy. Imagine so be Okan, and- Hanare, and Cobb versus Suzuki, Ren Narita, and Desperado. Hook it to my veins. Mm. I want it. I want it. My nipples got hard when you said that. I know. My nipples got hard. They are erect. <sighs> Um, but yeah, that would be really cool. So best case is definitely Ren. Worst case is Evil. Um, I've always got a door cracked open for Evil to be cool. Um, so we'll see. I would like, if we could see a more serious Evil in this, like less shtick, you know, comedy mid-card to House of Torture and, and see an Evil Evil, I wouldn't hate it. I always say that. I wouldn't hate yeah, it. Yeah, but that's... It's working. House of Torture is working, man. It is working. Man, the, now that they've got crowds back, House yeah. of Torture is over as fuck. We did not talk about that match. That trio's match in Osaka, that crowd was so loud booing the House of Torture that it was proof of concept. And it made yep. it made Strong Styles win. Hot name, by the way. Uh, Strong Styles win all the more sweet. When like Suzuki was the biggest baby face in the world. And then when... Ren got that hot tag. It fucking exploded. It was sick. Oh, it was great. It was so good. And like, what? okay, if they can build something serious with those trios belts, like they had a serious a serious run when they had Chaos holding the trios belts. That was great. Yeah. House of Torture is, is really great for, for holding the trios belts. Now with Strong Style holding the trios belts, like next up the, having the, the United Empire challenge for the trios belts, you're going to really establish something fantastic there. And you can even keep House of Torture in the mix a little bit because they are the kind of heels they are. They could even be getting involved in the match because they still think they've got a claim to it and they're like fucking Skeletor and the goons, you know what I mean? Fucking coming in and everyone's pissed off because they're like, we want the heroes to fucking win. We respect United Empire. We want to see this work rate and then in come the fucking dorks like like with some fucking bullshit. Like you can keep all of that mix going and keep everybody really busy so that would be be really hot that would be it would be fucking fantastic let's go to the next level. i mean there is a scenario Toriano. there oh one sec there is a scenario there where evil beats narita but then cobb beats evil so it's like evil's like well i've got the fucking the right to the the challenge and cobb's like but i beat you bitch so then yeah, do well, do like a three-way thing. six man scenario nine, nine man, man nine, nine man, man. <laughs> There you go. Anyway, you could throw in throw in somebody else and do a twelve man challenge. Well, there's still other members of that. Oh no, there's no other members of Narita's team. That's the only way it could go. <laughs> anyway, continuing. Okay, so next up, Toriano versus Ozzy Open's Mark Davis. The winner will challenge Will Osprey. Yes. Uh, so this, I mean, worst case scenario is always Toriano. But I'm going to say worst case scenario might actually be Mark Davis versus Will Ospreay. I don't like really? the idea of the United Empire with the infighting. 
I think it would be good. I think there's the... It'd be a great match. Don't get me wrong. And I think there'd be like a respect hug type scenario and Will would be a perfect person to show how fucking good Davis is. Like to be like, yo, you see this fucking hoss in singles action? My worry, worst case scenario, is that Yano was literally there just to trip up Osprey and keep him out of the main event. He's given himself that year. He needs to get to essentially get to Wrestle Kingdom, avenge his losses, do all that. Everybody's talking about his end goal being Okada. But really, I mean, probably his end goal is Kenny again, right? Like, unless they... I would think both. If they're going to do both, then you don't... There's no scenario where Will is going to win this beat Okada at Sakura Genesis and then be double belt Will after he beats Ken. Like, that's just not going to happen. So it's either like yeah. he goes through, gets beaten by Okada again, and he's like, fuck, they both got me. Now in the, the back half of this year, I need to beat them both. I wonder, I mean, you can do that if I guess Kenny has lost the title by then or are we heading to Wrestle Kingdom in a three-way? Like, I don't know how you fit no, I everybody think, I in. I think what they're... They're gonna have Kenny lose the title to some someone else. Yeah. Uh, that that's how the, you know they put it on Kenny to get it some uh, get it some play in AEW. Sure. And then you can have you can have that belt move to someone else mm-hmm. without it going back to Will because Will's going for the big boy belt again. Yeah, sure. So who do you have Kenny lose it to? Um. I'm trying to think of the, okay, so there's two ways you could go. The best story or the best match. If I'm thinking of the best match would probably be someone like Shingo. Mm -hmm. Giving Shingo the US title would be Because it's a big rub to have somebody else go over Kenny for that belt. Yeah. Kenny versus Shingo. And then, and then eventually down the line, you could you could have Shingo versus Will again because you know Shingo comes out and he goes like, yeah, you couldn't remember when you couldn't beat Kenny. Well, I did. Yeah. You know, so let me challenge for your belt after after uh, Wrestle Kingdom. Then merge merge the belts, double gold dash again, one less belt in New Japan again, whole new belt, bring back the V four, <laughs> and we've of, cleaned don't it don't up. Get rid of we've the cleaned red. it up. <laughs> okay. Don't get rid so, of the red. So. What do we think then? I'm going to go with worst case scenario is Yano because I feel like Davis and Osprey would love to tell a story together. And plus, if I could get Will Osprey versus Okada in my main event of Sakura Genesis when I'm there, fucking bring it on. That's best case scenario. Straight out the gate. Fair point. Fair out the gate. But Fair if point. you want to choose opposite, we can have different. We can have different answers. No, no, no. We're, you you've sold me. Okay. Uh, so I just didn't want. I I wanted to be a little bit of. Uh, I want to be a little bit obstinate. I yeah, didn't. <laughs> and that's fair. We all love the United Empire boys and we want to be a big team, but I feel like they're the kind of team that are like professionals first and they would put it aside, beat the absolute shit out of each other and then be hugging it out afterwards and laughing and crying together. You know, that's the kind of vibe. Oh I- Can you just imagine fucking when Mark Davis like yeets Will Ospreay into the fucking atmosphere? It'll make him look like a and- monster, man. Like oh, it would be so good. So great. It's a career maker. I'm very scared that, you know, you keep Mark Davis strong by having fucking Yano fucking ball shot him and roll him up and then the same shit on Will Ospreay and then we're into the next round, but, you know, against Cobb or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> Tori Yano fucking wins the New Japan Cup, which is always the risk because he's so, <laughs> so dangerous. Risk. He's actually, like, my most feared wrestler in a lot of ways, you know, in stuff like these tournaments because you're always so afraid he's just going to, like, knock out your dude, you know? Yeah, it's always the, always the risk with Toriano. Yeah, but yeah. okay. Uh, so the next level here's the story I think they're building here, and of course you can see it. Yeah. In Kyle Fletcher versus Yoshihashi, winner to face Hiroki Goto. Yeah. I know. Kyle what's Fletcher yeah. could put could put the Aussie Open in line for the tag team titles. Damn straight. At Sakura Genesis. Damn straight. By himself. Yeah, that's the plan. I think Fletcher. Over Yoshihashi, best case scenario, to face Goto. Then probably Goto puts him away. And, of course, Fletcher needs his fucking hoss bro, Davis, so they can work together to, 
you know, be tag champion. Could be a thing. So you're thinking Yoshihashi, worst case scenario, best case scenario, Kyle Fletcher? Absolutely. Okay. Next level. Shingo Takagi versus Aaron Henare. I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm going to try not to keep jumping ahead as well. So let's just look at Shingo and Aaron Henare. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I knew what you were doing. We yeah. were talking about the story there. I know, but I keep I keep going ahead and fucking foreshadowing the next round. So that's my bad. That's all right. Shingo Takagi versus Aaron Henare. Winner to face Tomatonga. Best case scenario. Worst case scenario. Best case scenario, Hanare with the upset, putting him in line for Hell a, yeah, I was going to say that too. <laughs> Hanare becomes king of pro wrestling. Yeah, I love that. He's having he's having fucking eat the banana the wrong way matches. He, fucking, and fucking, he fucking deserves it, bro. That would be sick. And also, Shingo doesn't, as much as I want to see a ton of Shingo matches in this tournament, he's been everywhere. And especially like over the two years of the pandemic, he was like the workhorse of New Japan. He can take a break. Yep. He can go out in the first round. He's just had world title matches. Like, he has no business being in the main event of Sakura, Sakura Genesis. He just had a main event. I think you could use him to elevate Hanare. Look at the start of the G1. Hanare managed to beat uh, Tanahashi. Then he gets Shingo. You know what I mean? He doesn't get a lot of wins. Like, they're more multi-tag wins and stuff like that. Put another head on his fucking on his belt. You know what I'm saying? Like, start to notch up ears like a Dolph Lundgren Universal Soldier scenario, have him put through it and get the KOPW off Shingo. Like, that's not a bad case scenario. And then free him up to fight, Ospre uh, fight Omega for the US or something. Yeah, I think that's fantastic. I think Aaron Harari would come up with some wild matches for KOPW. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think that'd be great. Uh, next up, David Finley and Tomohiro Ishii. Winner will face Great Okan uh, with the bye. So David Finley or Tomohiro Ishii, I think this is going to be a good time. This is going to be some hard-hitting shit. Sure. I think you're going to see, uh, if I can see how, the, how it plays out in my head right now, with uh, them going hard at each other at first, mm -hmm. you know, dojo-style match, lots of fucking angry hoss, like, uppercuts and fucking lariats and shit like that and then all of a sudden david finley maybe breaks out the fucking shillelagh to put uh ishii down to continue that like that heel slow fight. burn heel turn that he's doing yeah exactly i th I think if you had asked me before i probably would have thought that um finlay would get through ishii but after the promo and after the jay white stuff you don't put him in that situation if you're not planning to do shit with him and i think he's gonna go deep in this tournament i think he's gonna Going to get through Ishii, and as you say, with uh, dastardly means, as he's uh, becoming a little bit more neutral slash evil. And our final opener is Shooter Shoto Umino versus Yujiro Takahashi. Mm -hmm. I mean, worst case winner's scenario, face pretty clear. There. <laughs> worst case, best case, very clear. I can't even pretend to like be objectionist about that. Like, yeah, no. I uh, yeah, that would definitely be the worst case scenario. Shooter making a run in this would be really cool. Um, and potentially, you know, uh, he could be in line depending how far along you go go with this with title shots and whatnot in this bracket on this side anyway. So uh, I think uh, Shooter over the pimp is pretty clear. I mean, he can, he can always upset somebody. There'll be a cane ball shot or something like that and knock shoot out early. But I think after the Naito main event and stuff, I think they'll be wanting to make him have a pretty, you know, dominant Solid win run. here. Yeah. Let's talk about that Naito main event. People are shitting on it pretty hard. We said before it was a good match. Like, I think it's fine. Uh, you know, some people don't have great chemistry, you know, um, Maybe Shooter and, and Naito just aren't 100% ready for each other. I don't think that people need to be turning their back on Shooter. I don't think that people need to be cashing in their chips on him. Uh, I think that, like, he's he's a fucking kid, yeah. man. He's doing good. And it also feels like... He doesn't like, have way too long of an entrance. Yeah, he, he sure does. <laughs> um, I think as well that... I think it's sort of... I don't want to say it's part of the plan, but it is a little bit. Like, I think they would definitely keep stuff in their back pocket because they, he's not going to win. It's not time to, like, light the rocket on him or anything like that. 
I think the story is that like he had an opportunity to main that that event and he, like main event that spot and he and he fell short. That is the story, you know. So I I think you yeah. know the couple little botchy bits he had and stuff were real, but you know they they keep on rolling with it and it suits his character. And so I don't think yeah you need to be writing him off yet. I think he's got a huge future. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so uh, we're into the next round. Our second uh, second tier. Worst case scenario, Sonata or Kenta? Uh, it continues to be Sonata. <laughs> that seems right. Kenta Kenta matches are always entertaining. I don't give a shit what anybody says. I love Kenta. So, yeah, uh, as far as Sonata being so hit or miss, I think, ooh, I don't know if Sonata is going to be able to, to take the heat from Kenta. Kenta has a very deliberate style. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if Sonata's going to be able to be the fiery baby face there yeah. for uh, Kenta to, to bounce off of. I'm not sure I see. Now that I see Kenta there as well, like, I'm not sure. I I hope that the match that we actually really get is our best case scenario. I think Taichi and Kenta will have a way better match. I think they'll kick ever loving shit out of each other and it'll be really entertaining. Um, I don't think that's Sonata's style of match at all. So. Yeah, I don't even oh, think they man. would gel well. well. And yeah, I would. Uh, worst case scenario would be Sonata. Uh, and yeah, and best case out of Tai Chi and Kenta, um, I'm still going to back in Tai Chi. And that, that would be cool too, because okay. then you set up Tai Chi for a strong title shot as well. Ooh, okay. I'm into that. I'm into that. Belt up Tai Chi. Uh, so next up, our worst case scenario. Tetsuya Naito versus Chase Owens. Well, what do you think is the worst case scenario I mean, there? Chase Owens is the worst case <laughs> for all the reasons yeah. listed above. Um, I guess, I mean, I mean, I can always talk myself into anything, you know, and if it was some bullshit to get Naito out of the way, so then like a Tai Chi could steamroll a Chase Owens or whatever, I wouldn't have an issue with it. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think we could, would both agree that Chase Owens would be kind of the worst worst case there. And the best case, El Fantasmo over Chase Owens? Easy, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. all right, cool. Next up, best case, I'm sorry, worst case scenario, Evil or Jeff Cobb? Evil. Evil. Uh, best case scenario, Ren Narita or Jeff Cobb? Um, I think Jeff Cobb, for all the reasons that we listed earlier. I'd love to see a trios um feud between united empire and strong star okay cool all right next up worst case scenario tori yano versus will osprey yeah well yano's obviously the worst case yeah. scenario is it would knock will out of the tournament and it's a scarily real prospect oh god it looks like it sucks um and then the best case scenario mark davis or will osprey uh will osprey um, well, not that Mark Davis, okay. that I don't like Mark Davis, but his, you know, program is in tag. So there's no point having him go super deep in the contest. And Osprey at uh, Sakura Genesis in front of my eyes is just fucking best case. That's awesome. Osprey and Okada get fucked in, in Raya Goku. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. I'm trying to okay. manifest it into existence. Now, next up, next corner, uh, we've got. Worst case, I'm going to save this one. Best case scenario, Kyle Fletcher, Hiroki Goto. Yeah. Uh, best case is Kyle Fletcher uh, because I would okay. love to see him in the next round against any of those dudes, but I think the more realistic, you know, it'll probably be Goto. But I think I, I am. we're booking best case, worst case. So. Yeah, we're best case scenario, worst case. It's not what we it's no, not I know. What we I'm getting carried away. I'm getting it's carried away. It's what we want. To okay, have. so Kyle Fletcher would be my best case. Goto would be my worst case. Okay, and how much would you love this match? Worst case scenario, Yoshihashi versus Hiroki Goto in a singles match. <laughs> that's a bit of a snooze fest, to be honest. I, that's ultimate worst case. Yoshihashi going over Goto. Oh, bullshit. Worst case is Goto. Come no. on. No. Goto see. No, 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 no. You get his fucking music. It's sick every time. I, I I'm always ready so. for I a big Yoshi. Goto run. They never pull the trigger on him, but I fucking I, I got a soft spot for Goto. I think I think Yoshihashi's way more entertaining. Okay, we'll go with Goto. 
Okay. Akata Shorts breaks Best up case. over this argument. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the Yoshihashi here. You are the Yoshihashi of this. The fucking awkwardly <laughs> fucking staring, walking one, and I'm I'm just He's giving good so dad energy off everything I do. Good dad energy, like you've got underrated rig, you know? <laughs> fucking I mean, prayer stick. Yeah, I mean, this underrated is... Beyond, it's what's below underrated? <laughs> what's not rated? What's not, not rated, rated at whatsoever. all? Yeah, exactly. Negative rated. Exactly. Uh, so then, next ca- next up, worst case scenario: Shingo versus Tamatanga. Seems like a crazy world where you're like, my worst case would be Shingo Takagi because it's not the worst case. <laughs> but in the kind of story that I would like to see, I would kind of like to see Hanare or Tamatonga go a little bit deeper just because it'd be something different and I'd like them to get the opportunity, you know? So you want to go with Tamatonga? No, this is worst case scenario. So your worst case again would be Shingo Takagi? <laughs> Shingo, yeah. I know. Okay. That's crazy. Okay. That's absolutely fucking <laughs> insane. This may okay. this worst case thing may work out all right for us because if it ends up with him yeah, winning, then fine. I get Shingo and Okada again. I don't care about that. Well, Maybe I'm planning it. Best best case scenario, Aaron Hanare or Tamatanga. I mean, I would I would love to see just just Hanare make a run, eh? That would be so sick. Um mm. but Making it to the same. What would you do? Because he's got. Yeah. So if he overcomes, if he overcomes Shingo, he's technically got a shot at KOPW, right? Then if he overcomes yes. Tama Tonga, he's got a shot at the Never. So then would he just Ooh. like just talk about the Never and not even address KOPW Okada style or oh, no? Or belt, you, belt collector Hanare. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, just stack them up. Or do you think there's a Toa two belts? Yeah, and then. Double gold dash on those two, merge them together, get rid of the fucking KOPW. It works out. <laughs> Best case scenario, Aaron out. Hanare. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, so so you think best case scenario, Aaron Hanare? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Worst case scenario, Shingo. Mm. Best case scenario, Aaron Hanare. <laughs> exactly. Okay. But, We're gonna keep it up. Oh, keep it up. That said great. though, if we if Hanare, if Tamatong is the best case and Hanare is out. He still gets a KOPW, and then we can send Tama Tonga deeper to maybe give somebody else down the line a challenge. So I'm actually going to change that. I'm going to say okay. Tama Tonga best case scenario because looking at the matches coming up, I think we could do a never. We could build a never program here that I would quite like. So let's go ahead okay. and um, okay. yeah, and oh. Nah, fuck it. I'm backing in, Hanare. <laughs> All right. And we're going, we're going for the double gold dash on the Never and the KOPW emerging the belts. That's what we're doing. Dig it. Best case. Dig it. All right. So next next little area. Worst case scenario, Tomohiro Ishii or Great Okan? Uh, worst case would be Ishii. Not that Ishii is bad, but just because uh, I think the Great Okan's fucking wicked. Is the Great Okan also still your champion? Over in Britain, see the Queen's he is, champion. He is still the champion of my people, the yeah. the King's champion. The King's nowadays, champion. The Queen, Sorry, I forgot. He's the King's champion. Yeah, the King's uh, champion. champion of the champion of the Britain. Yep. And uh, what was what was it? The Leap and Lanny Poffo, rest in peace. Used to say, champion of the British. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. R.I.P. Lenny. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So yeah, I think uh, worst case in that scenario is Ishii. Ishii going over Ocon. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Best case scenario: David Finley or Ocon. Um, I think Finley. I love Okan, but I'm very interested to just see him develop quickly and, and okay. do a lot. So yeah, I'm I'm really into the idea of Finley doing a lot in this tournament. All right. Worst case scenario that would also Yujiro set him up with Takahashi. a title. Right? That would also technically set oh, yeah, him up yeah. with a title, a British title shot. I. You know what? Oh my God! If they could give David Finley the fucking Rev Pro British Heavyweight title, he turns into like the Rev Pro Irish Heavyweight title. Oh man, that'd be the sick IRA as well. will be fucking <laughs> oh. shit up. <laughs> oh my God! Oh, this is getting dangerous. This is getting I dangerous. We're booking a I civil war it. here. Oh, we no. are booking a fucking oh my United God! The Kingdom troubles torn are apart from this angle that we're trying to make happen. Uh, next up. 
Yujiro Takahashi versus Zack Sabre Jr. What is the worst case scenario in that, and why is it Zack Sabre Jr. Go? <laughs> it's not. It's Yujiro Takahashi. I tried to trip you up. <laughs> I tried to trip you up. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, Yujiro beating Zack would be terrible. Um, do you, do you, I don't do you want me to make a run at why? Minutes. Do you want me to book the pimp now in a way that it would be exciting for him to beat Zack Sabre Jr. and take over TMDK? Is that what you want to hear? Because I'm not sure you want that juju <laughs> in the world. <laughs> Oh no, it would just be so bad. I don't think that Yujiro could do a 15 minute match to for the TV title. <laughs> Doesn't need to be. That's what we're saying. We want six minutes, we were saying earlier today. That's what you're gonna get. Just I nut don't know shots. Yujiro could do a six minute match for the TV. Two minute matches. <laughs> not with Zach. Zach would fucking grab a knee and twist it off. Yeah, it's not gonna work out for um, him. So yeah. No. Worst case is easily huge. Best case scenario, shooter or Zach. I'm going to go with Shooter. Not that I don't love Zach, and he's the tournament guy. Oh, fuck, but Zach versus Finlay would be sick. But Shooter having a title shot. Has Shooter already had a shot at the Words on a Belt title? No. I don't care as much about him having that. He's got plenty of challenges to get through. I'm actually going to go Zach as the better choice. I think we'll see some okay. better matches down the line. Not the shooter isn't good, and I don't want to see him do well. But if we could get to a, like you know, the next round, I'm not supposed to be looking ahead. But if you're talking Finlay versus Zach, I feel like there's legs in that. All right, dig it. Yeah. Okay, so next up, do you agree? Our... Do you agree, or do you want to say I... shooter go deeper here? I I would like to see Zach continue to establish himself as the front man and yeah. go further. Yeah. He is the tournament guy. He's ahead of his own faction now. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I don't think he should go out in the first round against, like, essentially a returned young lion, you know? like, And no matter what paint they've put on him, he's still very new. And he's not yeah. going to have the fucking moves to outsmart the tournament guy in a tournament. So, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, although that could be a big head for him to collect. Huge. But huge. this is what we want to see happen, not what we think is going to happen. Exactly. Exactly. So, worst case scenario... Sonata versus Chase Owens. It's still Sonata <laughs> because it's the most it's the most dangerous to my main event when I'm there. You know what I mean? It's the most likely and that makes it more dangerous. I don't there's no reality. If there is a reality somewhere a flap of a butterfly's wing where Chase Owens is the finalist winner of New Japan Cup and headlining Sakura Genesis, then fuck it, I, I'm glad it's not my timeline. Um, but you know what? It, in this fantasy booking, if Chase Owens comes back on the gas big as fuck and he just minces everybody and makes his way through pure physical power to the fucking New Japan Cup, then I don't have a problem with it because at that time, at that point, we're talking about a different wrestler. So, <laughs> and he can at least. I honestly Fair. think I probably enjoy some Chase Owens matches more than Sonata matches. So. I, oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So there's, there's been some real king shit Chase Owens matches. Yeah, so. exactly. And he can be really funny. And so we rip on him. Everybody fucking rips on him, <laughs> as you do when anybody's had any kinds of suspect allegations. You can you just give him shit forever. But I, I honestly believe Sonata would be my worst case still. That's fair. Best case scenario, Tai Chi or El Phantasmo? Oh, now that's a tough one. That's pulling at my heartstrings yeah. there. Mm. Oh, are we establishing just four guys as a true threat, or are we establishing El Phantasma as the new head of Bullet Club? Fuck. Oh, how do you choose, Curtis? How do you choose? Man, I, I, I can't. I can't. With with all my heart, I can't choose this one. Case, I'm leaving case. it hundred percent up to you. Best case Fuck scenario you. between two of my favorites. I I think I got to I got to go with my heart and say that the best case would be Tai Chi. Yeah. But if I go with my head it would be El Fantasmo. That's it, right? Heart versus head. So our personal best case, I mean, I did an entire fantasy booking episode where I booked fucking Tai Chi to be the fucking IWGP world champion. So I'm going to back in my boy and we're going to go to all white opulence in Sakura Genesis. 
in front of my eyes. Opulence. That's what we're going to do. Tai Chi opulence. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Worst case scenario, evil versus Toriano. <laughs> oh, that's who, who can who can hit the, the bullshit better? Worst case. Oh, these are getting fucking tough. These are some worst cases. Um, evil's worst case. Because it's evil's mo- worst case. Because it's more likely. And if I got <laughs> fucking evil in the main event against Okada, I am gonna be pissed. Though yeah. it might actually be fun. People be throwing flaming cushions into the fucking ring from the <laughs> fucking like it's Vader all over again. Like yeah. So yeah. All right. Best case scenario: Will Osprey or Jeff Cobb? Best case or worst case, sorry? That was best case. Toriano versus Evil was the worst case. Oh, okay. Your best case that you've worked it out now is currently Jeff Cobb versus Will Ospreay. Oh, Will Ospreay is the best case, absolutely. Okay, okay. Very good. Next up. Worst case scenario, Yoshihashi versus Shingo Takagi. How is she going this far in the world? <laughs> in the worst case. <laughs> Luckily, he's set free at this point because Yoshihashi is the worst case. By far. That's fucking silliness. Yeah. That's fucking silliness. Mm-hmm. Okay. The best case scenario. You thought I was going to keep booking she, she go to the fucking worst case. <laughs> so no matter what, I end up with two amazing main events, worst case and best case. <laughs> you're like you're literally cheating this entire process (laughs) best case scenario here was kyle fletcher versus i believe tamatonga was what you settled on for your best case no no i ended up doubling back and just going to hanare so we ended up with kyle fletcher versus aaron hanare yeah okay so scenario uh hanare Really? Okay. Mm. All right. Hinare over uh, over Kyle Fletcher. Yeah. I'm a little oh, bit biased, but he's what? just been there for so fucking long, bro. Like, and he was like a young lion for so long, and he got injured and come back, and he's he's been there, and he was one of the first drafts to United Empire, but hasn't really had the opportunities of any of the others. So I would love to see him just fucking make a make a run, you know, at least a respectable distance. Yeah. Yeah, no, and that would that might set up the Holy Seaman Army for uh, a shot against uh, Ozzy Open. Mm-hmm. So we get Hanare and Okan versus Ozzy Open when Ozzy Open wins the belts. Yeah, did, what did you call them? The the Holy Seaman Army. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, the what? The Holy <laughs> Seaman Army. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's what Joel's been calling them on the fucking J cast. I have missed that every single time he said it, but I know why. It is said, and that is so funny that I can't even really process how funny it is. Like, I can't even really laugh, but that's so funny. If Joel invented that, I'm he trying, really I'm is a genius. Fucking, that's <laughs> so funny. All right, yeah, cool. Okay. That's great. Okay. Yeah, I would love the Holy Seaman Army versus United Empire. Aussie Open. Aussie yeah, Open. Sounds good. No, All right. right. Both, yeah. Same team. But I mean, they're both United Empire. That's what I'm yeah, saying. So it's a United yeah. Empire, but but not a civil war. It's just a sportsmanshipy lads, lads yeah. on tour. Let's let's see. Let's establish dominance yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. And Paul, I just want Worst- to say real quick before we, because we won't be talking about him again. It sounds like I'm not into Tamatonga doing well in this competition. I actually think he will do well in this competition, and I want to see him do well. But it's. This, again, is my personal best case and worst case. You know what I mean? So in this situation, Aaron Hanare has gone through both Takagi and Tonga and now has a shot at both titles. It's going to unite them and make them one. So that's my, my <laughs> best case scenario. That's why we're here. And then there's no way a tag wrestler like Fletcher is going to beat Hanare in my eyes. So, yeah. All right. All right. Two, two uh, young men uh, out there are fucking killing it. Sounds awesome. Yeah. And worst case scenario, 
Tomohiro Ishii versus Yujiro Takahashi. Uh, I think we all know the answer here. It's it's huge. It's huge, huge. Huge, huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, there's really nothing there. Okay. Uh, so The Holy Seaman Army one. is so funny, though. Does everybody understand how funny that is? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, the Holy Seaman There's so Army. many levels of joke in that one joke. Uh, anyway, okay. Sorry. I got distracted. No, it's, I just it's funny it every for time. reasons, yeah, for yeah, sure. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's what he called them all through the uh, World Tag League. How did year. I not fucking pick up on that? I've listened to every episode they've ever done. Maybe I, I thought know. he was saying Holy Demon know. Army or something and it just didn't click, you know? Yeah. Anyway. Well, uh, what did we have for worst case scenario here? Is to, uh, uh, Yujiro. Okay. Best case scenario, you had David Finley? Yeah. And Zack Sabre Jr. Mm. Uh, I'm going to... Back in Finley here. Ooh. Ooh. Finley into the finals. Oh, actually, fuck. Because if you so go Zach, the then semi-final. you get an Osprey Zach final, which would be bad. Oh, no, no. We're talking semi finals still. He'd still yeah. have to go through somebody else. Oh, that's a tough one. Best case. I mean, Finlay did do really well in the G1. Like, really well. Yeah. Like, people need to expect him in this tournament. Fuck it, I'm going to back him. He's doing... He's making big moves. Yeah, David he's making Finley big moves. And he, and he needs to put, put that in the ground, right? He needs to plant that flag. So, let, let's back him in. Let's go Finlay's best case. All right. Over, back to the semis. Worst case scenario. Sonata... Or Toriano. No, Evil. Sorry, you said Evil would be the worst case scenario. Yeah, I did say Evil. Sonata ver- oh, God. Sonata versus Evil could actually happen. Just that match happening series. is my worst case scenario. Oh, Fuck, it would God. suck. God damn it. Best Sonata case scenario is me putting a finals. fucking gun in my mouth if that comes to pass. I'll tell you what. Um, <laughs> worst case is still Sonata. Because, okay. again, most likely, and at least Evil's got the fucking, the goons, you know what I mean, to a mate, occasionally make me laugh or some, like, bullshit or something, you know what I mean? Like, Sonata has literally nothing to offer me right now. If Right God. now. Right now. Yeah. Right now. If Maybe he starts someday. dating Tai Chi full-time and it becomes just five guys and he changes it up, then I'm into it. Hmm. Best case scenario, you've got, looks like, Will Ospreay versus Tai Chi. Whew. A rematch from just a couple of days ago. Yeah. I still don't think Tai Chi's got what it takes, and I would love to see Ospreay versus Okada in the same hole, so I've got to go best case as Ospreay. All right. All right. But fuck, Tai, Chi, cool, so. tai Chi would be sick. <laughs> Worst case scenario, Yoshihashi versus Yujiro Takahashi. God, fuck. Oh, it's huge. It's always huge. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Best case scenario, Aaron Hinare versus David Finley. Finley. They were lions together, weren't they? Yeah. I think so, or at least a bit of a crossover. I think, but yeah. I think I think Finlay was technically the class before, because like Hanare oh. was like seconding like alongside Okan and stuff, and Finlay was like with Juice and Jay with Jay and stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So not technically, but um, yeah, I think I think Finlay. I th- I think that'd be the end of Hanare's run. Uh, and I think he would have done very he well was. for himself to get there. He's picked up two title shots on the way. Um, and, yeah, good to go. I, I, I think Finlay... Yeah, possibly a third was, if he could beat Fletcher. That'd be yeah, great. Yeah, absolutely. All right. One, one second real quick. The dog is going sick. Hang on. No, it's not oh. time for this. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. It's 
finally the food just kicked in and she is fucking pissed off. All right, we're so <laughs> close to being angry? done. Then we'll play. She's rah. All right, continue, please, Curtis. Sorry. Worst case scenario, evil versus Yujiro Takahashi. House of Torture explodes. No, no, it, it was um, the- Sonata was still the worst case. Oh, sorry, Sonata. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Sonata versus Yujiro Takahashi. Yeah. You're right. Sonata's still the worst case. (laughs) (laughs) Because you actually actively do not want to see Sonata win. I'm so scared. There's no no reality where Yuji's in the fucking finals. The the threat of Sonata ruining my night is so fucking (laughs) real that I'm not playing any fucking games with it. Sonata's worst case. Mm -hmm. Straight up. Straight up. Sonata is worst case scenario. Best case scenario, sir. Will Ospreay versus David Finley, which sounds like a fantastic match. It might actually happen. Yeah, that sounds very likely and very fucking cool. Um, are we thinking that the Finlay thing might be more interesting than the Osprey thing? Just because uh, we know think- where Osprey's going and he's probably, there's no chance he's going to become champion of Sakura Genesis. I mean, actually, if, fucking, if, think, if Osprey yeah, got there, there's down. a chance he could, you know. I think they knock him down a peg before he goes into the G1 and wins the whole thing. Yeah. And if so Finley, somewhere like Finley, that's a huge scalp. And then, of, mm-hmm. then big title shot. Like, yo, he just came from fucking doing nothing, having a good showing in the G1, did nothing, attacked Jay White, ran the table in the New Japan Cup and became the, became the winner of the New Japan Cup. Holding right. that title and shit, like I'm coming for Okada, and then you know he's probably not going to win, but that would be a cool main event with a different challenger that we haven't seen before. It's a really fun best case, and you know what's so exciting about that is I wouldn't have before that promo considered him for it. Wouldn't have even thought about it. That is the power of like a good angle and a good promo. You're like, oh wait, maybe this guy can be more than that mid-card guy you know definitely and i think that that's that's a beautiful thing like he's he's been he's been putting himself out there just little bits at a time good showing in a g1 uh good matches for the new japan cup that sort of thing he's been having a lot of fun putting himself out there bit you know bit by bit by bit by bit and now it's time to make a splash yeah can i say a couple of things that i would like to see change in this new Please. presentation and things like that. I'd like to see him change up his gear <clears throat> into something a little less like pop punky. So less of the, um, the kind of like checkered patterns studs and, and, and stuff. studs and stuff. Like you could kind of have a bit of that vibe, but a little bit more serious vibe. And then I'd also like him to start fucking naming his moves a bit more seriously. Like what the fuck is a trash panda? Like do the same move, but call cool. But call it like expect me or something like that. You know what I mean? Start to take yourself more seriously so people take you more seriously. Yeah. Take his, his presentation a little bit more seriously. Yeah, and okay. then he's got the shillelagh, yeah. you know what I mean? And he maybe he's still wearing the jacket like he, he was after the thing. Like just a bit more sort of darker. I'm not saying he needs to dye his hair black and wear eyeliner and be evil, you know, but like just take himself a bit more seriously. Um, and I mean, maybe in his gear you could kind of tie in a bit of that sort of Irish leather work a little bit or something like that. I don't know, but like, you know what I mean? Like start something to set him apart a little bit. I like it. I like that a lot. I also think that uh, Finley and Will had a, had some really great matches last year uh, in the, was it the G1? Yeah. yeah they had some really yeah. great times. Fucking yeah, that could be a banger did and it might beat, actually happen. Which did is he cool beat part. Will? Was he one of the upsets from G1? Yeah. Yeah, I think he was. One it of the was right, one. so it's not even yeah. unprecedented that he could have Will's number. It's so, true. so that's interesting. He already upset him once. Maybe he can do it again, and then Will's like you said, he's got to be knocked down a peg. He's like, everybody's got my fucking number, bruv. You know what I mean? I need to go back to the fucking drawing board and get this G one going and fucking mow through everyone. I love it. Yeah, I love it. I love it. This picture you've painted for me. I love it. This picture of your fan that I love this. Uh, okay. So we've got uh, Sonata winning the New Japan Cup is the worst case scenario. Absolutely. David Finley winning the world, uh, the, I'm sorry, the New Japan Cup is the best case scenario. Absolutely. 
I love it. I love, and there's two matches I want to talk about sure. that are going to be along this tour. Uh, one is a generational tag team bout. We've got Okada and Tanahashi, your girlfriend, Hiroshi Tanahashi. Tell me more. Teaming up against Shooter and Renren. What do you think about that? Oh. Yeah. So those two versus those two, not like uh, yeah. an elder statesman and a, and a baby. It's babies versus nope. dads. Babies versus old dogs. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like it. I think that'll be really cool. I think, yeah, yeah seeing seeing the present and the past and the future all collide. Yeah, that's cool. That, uh, that's another big statement. You know, you talk about putting Shooter, like, next to Tanahashi and next to Moto. Now you're putting him, like, directly opposite Okada and Tanahashi, you know. Just more kind of nods that, like, this is where we're going. So, it's cool. Okay. And then the other match that has been announced for this uh, New Japan Cup tournament uh, is Leo Rush versus Hiromu for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight belt. Sure. How do you feel about that? Sure. Uh, Give me I, the best case scenario, worst case scenario there. I feel good about it. I feel like worst case scenario would be uh, the continuation of the Hiromu stuff. Not that I don't like Hiromu, just it's feeling a little bit stale and we can do more more with him or put him in a different place. I think best case scenario is Leo, but then immediately being confronted by Robbie Eagles. Ooh, that'd be fun. Because Robbie was like, because when Leo put out his promo and stuff challenging uh, old mate, you know, after Yo had left, Robbie was like, nobody put this shit in the group chat. And he was like, Okada thought it was cool. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I checked with Okada, he signed off on it. And Robbie's like, I'm the fucking junior of chaos, bitch. Like, yeah. if, if Yo's out, yeah. I'm next in line before you, you know? And so just another fucking thing that, that puts Robbie at odds with chaos. So, uh, yeah, Robbie said, no, uh, he's not leaving chaos. So, mm. but he has said that about bullet club too. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if it's you, a, if you were planning Rob, to betray your teammates, would you be like, I'm definitely leaving. I'm not going to fuck them over at all. Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you think, where, where do you think he ends up? Robo MDK? No. Nah. Uh, maybe. But uh, I would I would like to see United Empire still, but um because I haven't seen the match yet, but I've heard there's a bit of that kind of vibe because he had a one on one with Fletcher in Australia at Tamashi, and there was Tamashi, a bit yeah. of that sort of vibe like a a handout like hey, and Robbie kind of walked away, so you never know if that's kind of foreshadowing for something else. Mm, planting seeds, planting seeds. Yeah. Do you want to hear some uh, matches that are coming up for the anniversary show on the 6th? Yeah, sure. 51st anniversary show. Uh -huh. uh, so you've got ZSJ and uh, our young boy here, Kosei Fujita, uh -huh. versus Kenta and ELP. That's fun. Yeah. Uh, you've got United Empire, that's Ozzy Open and Will, versus uh, Toriyano, Tamatanga, and Satoshi Kojima. That's fun. That could be fun. Uh -huh. Uh, strong style versus House of Torture again. Mm -hmm. United Empire. Fun. If it's a cheering crowd, that, that'll be super fun. Yeah. Uh, we've got Hanare, Okan, and Cobb versus Sonata, Shingo, and Naito. Mm -hmm. That'd be fun. That would be fun. Hiromu and Bushi versus Yohei. Mm -hmm. Yo and Leo. Mm -hmm. Or is it? Lee, Lee Yo, that's what it's called. Yeah, not Yo, I, I said, isn't Yo Hei like Lee a Yo. Noah guy? <laughs> I was like, who are we talking yes, about? Yes, he is. Yeah. Hiromu and Bushi versus Lee Yo, uh, which will be fine, I guess. Uh, a couple of the New Japan Cup singles matches, which will be uh, Shooter and the Pimp versus and uh, David Finley and Tomo, uh, Tomohiro Ishii. And our final match, the main event, is Hiroki Goto and... <laughs> Hiroki <laughs> Goto and, and Yoshihashi kids. versus, and his kids, and, uh, and his oldest <laughs> son, and some tacos. Yeah, versus Okada and Tanahashi for the belts. <laughs> just Okada just running over his own team. I love it. Like, he's like, "Fuck, fuck yeah. these guys! I'll what just carry them myself." That? that I love that. I love that, and I hope they fucking win. That would be so sick that I would have no problem with it. You know what else is sick, Curtis? What's that? 
internet security. <gasps> you want to stop your computer from getting sick? I you mean, want to stop your computer from getting sick? I mean, I can. You should. None of it has to do with software. Uh, it's all hardware to do with all the computer problems I've had recently. But for the sake of this ad, let's say it was software. If only I had NordVPN installed on my computer, then it would have been safe. Mm-hmm. You ever heard of ransomware? That shit sounds terrifying. <laughs> it does sound terrifying. It's probably Stars Mel Gibson. Oh. Do you remember that movie? Actually, Ransom? That's, that's, a, yeah, that's, Ransom. A, that's yep. a dark cut right there. Uh, <laughs> anyway, deep, deep uh, I also do have Nord on all my devices. They're not broken because of malware. But if they, in this scenario, if they were and then I had NordVPN, then it wouldn't have happened and that'd be great. That's true. And and the best way for you to get NordVPN to protect your software is to go and grab your exclusive NordVPN deal by going to nordvpn.com slash shorts. shorts. You get a huge discount off your NordVPN plan plus one additional month for free. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. That's going to protect you from hackers. It's going to protect your software on your on your computer. It's going to protect your credit cards, your bank information, your social security numbers. It's also going to supercharge all of your streaming services. It's going to make it so that you can stream Netflix in Australia. If you, I mean, if you want to, I'm not sure how Netflix is in Australia. It seems like it might be, you're shaking your head right now. It might not be a good thing. No, no, no. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I was actually uh, you, you shaking might... my head at my computer as it was throwing up another fun error. And I was like, you motherfucker, we've only oh, got God. minutes left in this show. But you are 100% right. You could come to Australia. You could check out our shows. You could, um, we've you just watch, been uh, watching watch Physical 100 on Netflix, which I'm sure oh, yeah. you can get on every Netflix. But if you want to see ripped Korean dudes and girls doing... <laughs> acts of strength dubbed over terribly with American voices, then do I have the show for you? Physical I wonder. watched that the other day when I was in Wales. I love we it. sat and watched that. It was a ton of fun. A ton of fun. Everyone was kind of so watching good. it like, why Why are we watching this? And I'm like, shut up. Shut <laughs> this the is fuck awesome. Up. These Let guys me watch are it. mud wrestling. Let me watch it. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. Th- this Absolutely entire group of, this entire group of people is about to pull an entire ship up a ramp. And then, like the leader, like pops off his shirt, and we're like, "It's a wrap on the ship now," because this guy's oh, fucking it's done. That's he when the, the that's switch. He, exactly he's gone fucking into super mode. You're fucked. So yeah, I would really super recommend mode, it. like the protection that is uh, given by NordVPN. Exactly, I cannot guarantee there is a super mode button on the NordVPN app, but I can uh, let you know that that's the level All of, of performance. Yeah, exactly. That's just what how All it it's come VPN. standard standard with super mode activated. That's right. Yeah. Super mode is uh NordVPN is the Okada of Super Mode VPNs. Absolutely. Because it's that is the level of greatness that it gives you uh for your protection. Yeah. Rainmakering any NordVPN. fucking malware and hackers into fucking pieces. As they Sorry. cry right. as he maintains risk control and they sit on the ground crying at him like a young Go to Kiyomiya. And it then picks up your fucking enemy and rainmakers them and emerald flosions them and tombstones them a hundred times until they're dead. That's what NordVPN does. Oh my gosh. Right into the ground. Yep, right into the ground. Exactly. I love it. Well, thank you very much for uh for figuring out a way to make this work today. I'm sorry so I had I, to uh, cancel our normal recording. Certainly time. fine. It would have been even harder this morning trying to figure out how to plug all this shit in when I was asleep at like 6 a.m. But I will say That's that uh, hopefully it recorded. That'd be good because we oh, don't oh have God. the time. <laughs> Looks like it is. <laughs> what? I don't know why I'm fucking jinxing us again like I did in the elevator that don't time. Don't put it in the end. Don't put you it in know the I, put, I like to put things into the ether. So oh hopefully that's not God. the case. Knock on wood. We get to hear this again, oh and uh, hopefully people enjoy it. They come and check out us on social media at Okada Shorts. Uh, check out mm-hmm. our individual accounts at Throw and Dice. I don't know if that's actually got one at El Destructo eighty three. Yeah, yep. at Faces Feels Cast. Uh, check out our link tree link dot t dot re. T- however, that works. Okay. Dot e. yeah. yeah. See, why didn't they just make it link dot tree anyway? Uh, at Okada Shorts. And thanks for listening, and it has been a fun time speaking to you all. One-year anniversary. Well done, Curtis. I love you, bro. I'm glad that we became friends and did this podcast, man. 
This is so much fun. It is so much fun. Congrats to us. Yeah, congrats Congrats to to us. us. Exactly. Give us. And if anybody wants to, if anybody wants to give us a pat on the back, give give us an email. Give us a a text message. Uh, Give us send up a smoke signal. Mm -hmm. Um, Send a dove across the Pacific Ocean or Atlantic Ocean direct to Australia. And I'll receive it. Yep. I will say though that if they do want to congratulate us with gifts of money, they can subscribe to the Count Out Network Patreon. There's a way to do it. I'm sure there'll be a link in the page in the notes. If I and then you can hear it. more of us. Yeah, and you can hear drop your shorts. Where on this week's episode, uh, I told you all about my experiences doing commentary for the first time for Dude, Where's My Ring? And Curtis told us a great story about his time in Wales playing war games and fucking up an entire banquet of Chinese. Everybody's meal. Exactly. Just fucked it all up. Looked like an absolute douchebag that everybody hated. all over the table. Exactly. It It was was disgusting. I had second thoughts about being his friend but he pulled it together and did the right thing, and it's all fine. So if you want to check that out, check out the Cat Out Network Patreon. Um, and until then, uh, what, do, what do we say? It's rate to subscribe, listen or die, keep it right, keep it tight, and most importantly, keep it what? Short. has been a count out podcast hey guys gals and non-binary pals it's amanda bones and i'm ashley of how to talk to your friend about wrestling the podcast on the count out wrestling podcast network a weekly show where we talk about all of our favorite things babes blood and brutality we also talk about other fun things like is kenny omega finally too tan and how much blood is too much blood because that looks like way too much blood So join us on the adventure of teaching me, Amanda Bones, about wrestling.